Sometimes I just like to enjoy my coffee for a moment before I start the filming. I need to get my energy up. And it's my Dark Horse coffee mug. Makes me really happy. So immediate research is showing me that there is a distinction between rowing apps and rowing games. There are actually games out there. I didn't know that. Two of which right now are called Tap to Row. That one looks about as digitally advanced as if I were to go use an Atari. Maybe it's fun, we'll find out. The other is called Championship Rowing, which has one of the funnier reviews that I've seen in a long time. I mean, there are some games, and then there are performance apps, and then one mobility app that I've found. There's a lot to review here. Row app spectator. I assume that means if you want to watch rowing, where do you go? Let's find out. Oh, you could find rowing races near you, which is like, you know, <laughs> it's not that hard because there aren't that many. Hmm. Ooh, you can follow crews and events in case you're deep into the rowing world. Hmm. I feel like row app spectator isn't going to necessarily make it onto the top 10 lists of most useful apps in 2018. There are calculators, there are timers, there are logs. Where do I even start? Rowing New Zealand has its own app. Did you know that? Okay, this may be deeper than I was ready to get into. I mean, there are rowing apparel design apps. I don't know if I'm ready to handle all this. Maybe we just have to go one week at a time and review these apps for you. Let's try that. If you think there's an app that I need to check out, sell me on it and maybe I'll decide to review it based off of people's input because I don't even know where to start. This is crazy. There are so many apps. I feel like I should have been exploring this years ago. Although to be fair, many of them don't even have reviews, so I don't know what that means. Why aren't there more of us out there? I think that's the problem. This is a highlighting a major catastrophe in the rowing market. There are only like 20,000 of us in the world. Hmm. Here's one called Sailing Fun Race, but it actually has people rowing, kayaking, and canoeing. I think they got that one wrong. I row. I want to know when the last time some of these things Oh, yeah. I'm looking at like the last updated time on these apps was, and many of them were a long time ago. We're gonna mess around with this, and I think I'm gonna be able to review an app at a time, because this is interesting stuff, but there are too many for me to try and handle all in one. I'm just not that amazing. And that's a lot of research, plus a lot of rowing. I gotta race this weekend. Okay, it's decided. We're gonna do one at a time. So let's start with the old fashioned, good old faithful, erg data. Let's check it out. Frankly, I've never used it, I'll be honest. Some people are like, Shane, this is your industry. You work with Concept2, you should probably use erg data. Yeah, but I've just never involved tech in my rowing. I've always just rowed for the sake of rowing. Um, but that's okay, we're gonna test it out now. All right, so I've downloaded the Erg Data app. Just picked this up, Amazon, 15 bucks. Conveniently holds your phone on top of the monitor. <laughs> and apparently you can take calls. All right, thanks so much, bye. <laughs> uh, this is actually gonna hold all of the apps on top of the monitor. Um, and it's going to allow me to basically have a second display, a second heads up display on the machine. I don't know why I haven't had one of these earlier. Easy to find on Amazon, just search Concept2 phone holder. Yeah, I know there's another one coming, I think. I don't know who's making it. The issue that I'm finding with this is that it tends to push the buttons, so it'll turn the volume up or it will lock the phone. Not the best, so you have to be a bit ginger when you're putting it on, but that's okay. So this is my Erg Data app. You can see it's nothing fancy. Uh, there's nothing beautiful, I would say, about it. It's functional and that's okay. Uh, you can see if I swipe, I get different screens here. And the other thing I believe this does, again, we're gonna go through this. If I have a logbook, a Concept2 logbook, this is gonna automatically push my workouts to the logbook. That's kinda nice in that it's gonna permanently track all of my workouts. I like the idea of that. We're gonna play with this and see how it goes. Got my settings, oh yeah, Concept2 online logbook. Here we go, sign in. Now I just have to find that login data. I have very complicated sign-ins, by the way. Every password is different. None of you can get in. Please don't try. <laughs> Wrong username. So we're in. Anytime I do a workout now, as long as this guy is running, it's gonna track it, and it's gonna push it to my logbook so that all my workouts are tracked. 
That's nifty. I like that. I don't want to have to do a workout, write it down, transcribe it to another website. I want it to just push, which is effective. I like that idea. Let's try voice guidance. Voice guidance is on. I have 15, 30, one minute and two minutes. So let's go with every minute. You know what? I don't want that. I don't want voice guidance. I don't need a coxswain in my ear when I'm erging. In a boat, yes. Weight units, pounds, of course, even though the rest of the world use kilograms. Weight class, proudly heavyweight. Oh, this is interesting though, did you know? Uh, lightweight women are under 135 pounds. Light, uh, heavyweight women, over 135. Lightweight men, under 165. I was there at one point in my life, and I'm 6'3". And heavyweight men, over 165. Check. Indoor rower type. Oh, okay. Oh, this uses both. So I can use this for a skier as well. That's cool. So I've got indoor rower on slides, which are the little sliding feet that you have on our machine. Dynamic, which is the dynamic rower. If you haven't played with that, I highly suggest it. Much more like actual rowing or like the RP3, which is another type of rowing machine. And then the skier. Right now it's rower. I don't own a Bluetooth heart rate monitor. Probably should. We're up to date. So that's good. All my settings are set. So I can see stroke count, drive length, average force, drag factor. Oh, cool. So my drag factor will be there for me in the middle of a workout if I want it. My drive speed, that one's important. And peak force, also cool. So if I tap on any of those, if I'm like tapping, nothing happens on that. Oh, I swiped. But it shows my logbook here, so that's cool. And then I've got my other units measuring out here. You can see at the bottom it says, please connect concept to cable. Um, that would be, or wirelessly, if you have a PM5. We're gonna go sync this up to my machine, and then probably my skier too, and let's play around with it. All right, um, we're gonna head out to the garage, the newly developed Dark Horse headquarters. We cleared out the garage this past weekend in order to make way. Uh, apparently I left the garage door open. Everything's still here. We're good. We just newly basically built out the gym here. So this is kind of the perfect setting. We're gonna give this thing a go. So this guy fits right on top. I'm getting the machine set up right now. I'm trying to get the uh, the app pulled up. And as I mentioned before, the mount on the top of the monitor turned my volume all the way down. So even if I wanted that voice module, <laughs> I'm not gonna get it because the mount actually just like holds the buttons down. So minor design flaw in that, but that's okay. Again, it's still holding my phone, which I appreciate. Let's link this thing. Let's go to more options. Turn wireless on. Little screen popped up. Bluetooth, smart wireless, PM5. Let's connect. Connected to erg. There we go. Incorrect date. <laughs> oh, this is good. It's in Chinese. It's an auto message. <laughs> no, thank you. Okay, so this is nice. It just told me that my uh, time and date appear to be wrong and doesn't want me to reset them. And wow, it's set to 321, 1215. 321, 1213. That's because I keep my watch running a little fast. Perfect, I would like that. Thank you very much. And look at that, I'm all set. See that little, this guy tells me that I'm connected. I'm zeroed out here. There we go. I've got all my, uh, I have all my data now. Let's give this thing a run and see how it goes. So you can see how the monitor flows. When I go to program a workout, it's gonna then push that workout uh, directly to the app. So here's how this is gonna work. I'm gonna set a thousand meter row and then I'm just gonna do that and you can kind of see how it works as I'm going. So we'll go to set a workout, thousand meters, change my split length, and just for fun I'll set a pace boat at 150. Okay, you can see it pushed it up here. So if I swipe over, everything's zeroed out. Still nothing on the logbook. Oh, okay, if I tap that, it changes my units. So I'm gonna sit here. I could go change units here. And I can simultaneously watch my watts. That's cool. Okay, let's give this a try.
meters to go. The tracking is actually pretty accurate here. There's maybe a three meter lag, which is pretty good considering that Bluetooth connection is working all the time. I really liked how I was able to have two units of measurement displayed the whole time. That was pretty cool because I've never had that. I always have to choose one or the other. And here I was watching my wattage as well as my split the whole time, which is pretty cool because it allowed me to see which was which and also equate the two, which is something that I haven't been able to do before. If I switched to calories, then I'd be able to equate my calories per hour to a split. And if I've never used one of those units of measurement before, that's a really great way to learn between them. So we'll call that a little, call that a little hack. Between them is if you need to learn a unit of measurement, throw the erg data on top of your monitor, and all of a sudden you get to learn, all right, well, I'm used to rowing it at 150 or a two minute or a 220. What is that in a calories an hour? My 146 split is a 1311, 1311 calories per hour average, as well as a 294 watt average. It's just an interesting way to learn. My average drive time, my average drive time was 0.61 seconds. My drag factor throughout was 125. If I tap, this is cool, I just found this one. If I tap drive time, it gives me all of these different, oh, this is cool. So I can check out, oh, peak force. Let's see what my peak force was. 250 foot pounds, 250 pounds, which one is it? <laughs> 250 pounds of peak force. I weigh 190 pounds. I have no idea if there's a relationship there. My average force was 150 pounds. My drive length was 1.39 meters. So my stroke count took me 78 strokes to go 1,000 meters. That one's kind of cool. Projected finish. 332 matches up with what my actual finish time was, which was 332.6. So that's awesome. Oh, and I can change my drag factor too, too. So I can check out my drive speed and my drive time. And I'm sure at some point, somewhere, somebody has found a relationship between those. Go for it. That's a fun thing to play with. So if I swipe to my next screen, so this is giving me all of those things, right? I can select what my monitor is showing me here. If I swipe, I can look at all of those things simultaneously. Oh, and now you can see as well, it's now logged that workout. Oh, turns out I got 332.7, not what I'm reading here, which is often the case, by the way. You'll often find there's a tenth of a second difference between what your monitor tells you and what the memory tells you. So true results come from the memory not the end screen of the workout monitor. So you can see it logged my date, time, my distance, and my score in my logbook. Because I chose ahead of time, I wanted 100 meter splits. It's got all of that now logged in my Concept2 logbook online. That's pretty cool. I could see that being useful, especially if you're going for the million meter club, five million meter club, you're definitely gonna want this. Or if you're doing half marathons or full marathons, anything interesting, track it. I don't talk about tracking a whole lot, but this is a really simple way to do that. No fuss, nothing crazy. Ooh, I can even add comments to the workout. I'm just discovering all of this as we go. I'm brand new to this, by the way. I haven't used it before. There's a place where if I had a heart rate monitor on, it would have tracked my heart rate throughout the workout. That's cool. Again, I should probably have a heart rate monitor so I can talk about it. Oh, it weight adjusts for me. That's pretty cool too. So, it's weight adjusting off of a 189 pound average. My weight adjusted split was a 138.2. So my weight adjusted time was 316.5. Now I don't know what it's weight adjusting off of. Oh, I can set it here. I can set, let's say I want to weight adjust on a 200 pound weight adjustment. Uh, it didn't change anything. I don't know, but you can weight adjust. That's kind of cool. Uh, and my workout's completed and now logged in the Concept2 logbook online and all through this simple little integration function. I believe this works for both Android and iPhone. I'm gonna say, let's call this one a big thumbs up. I think there's nothing crazy about this. I don't think there's anything that could go wrong. And in fact, I know a lot of other apps piggyback on the ErgData app. So 
they just take the guts of the Herb Data app and maybe they make it prettier or they give it a different functionality. But all they're doing is using the info that's coming in from Herb Data to drive their own app. So at the end of the day, this is a pretty powerful tool that supplies a lot of functionality for other things, which is why it's a great place to start when we're evaluating apps. So let's give this a try on the skier because it measures up with the skier too, what do you say? And then we'll, we'll see how the skier measurement goes. Let's give it a try. I need to disconnect from my rower and turn that off. Now we're gonna to connect to the skier for this test. Okay, so this is interesting, check this out. If I push this button, it says hold iPhone against PM5 screen to connect. Let's see if that actually works. So I'm gonna turn it on. Hold iPhone against PM screen. Maybe I have to turn on the, that doesn't make sense. Hmm, scan function maybe doesn't work? I don't know. Okay, so we're pairing it. Connection successful, huzzah! Oh, also set incorrectly. I love this feature, I think that's really cool. It's automatically setting my date and time. That's really nice, so check this out. It says March 13th, but it's actually March 21st. March 21st, it just synced it. Also has like a, a lower function. Feel like this is maybe for skier purposes so that I can look down at it because that's what I need when I'm skiing. We're gonna do another thousand meters on this guy. Oh, I need to change my settings. Indoor rower type skier back. Okay, skier is set. Monitor and erg data are connected. Let's do a thousand meter piece and see what I think of that.
Okay. So, I worked well, and the uh, and the phone connected well. Gave me good feedback and data, and I liked having a second screen that was a little brighter. So, um, all in all, I colored that a, a green light. Had some fun with it, and uh, yeah, we'll check you out in the next review.